uh, I cannot uh, I cannot work uh, as I as I used to do uh, because I because not not because I I stopped um, enjoying working as a journalist but because I st uh, I cannot watch those videos I don't want to cover all those events what are happening I cannot um, tell um, to my journalist why uh, it's important to cover primaries of United Russia because I think no one cares about primaries of United Russia and, and a lot of events that are happening in Russia are not, are not real news, they have uh, uh, so-called news but they have nothing to do with, with the real life um, and you know I, I thought of uh, rather old uh, post-Soviet anecdote of 90s uh, when when the person come, comes to a tourist agency uh, trying to, uh, to find a place uh, where to, uh, to have holidays, um, he's given the globe and he's watching that globe, uh, looking for a country he'd like to go to, um, can not find anything he likes, and asks, do you have another globe? Uh, so I was looking for another globe uh, for putting another news agenda to cover. And finally I found. I decided that that uh, that would be cool to uh, start a media project uh, that uh, that can uh, cover news, not news from this day, probably 100 years ago. Uh, and that that that's how our project uh, project 1917 uh, started last year. Now it's it's almost it's more than than a year since we started. Thinking of it, um, we, we launched Russian version of this project uh, in, in, in November um, 2016. Uh, we launched English version project19.com uh, this January, and um, this this we have, we have a huge team of uh, uh, of journalists and historians work, working on this project. But actually, uh, our attitude is, is not uh, is much more uh, media approach. Uh, we are trying to uh, to create an atmosphere. We're trying to look into the history uh, from you know, from the inside. Uh, usually, when when a historian um, writes about history. He already knows the results. He knows uh, the, all the outcomes and he knows what was important and what was not important from the beginning. Uh, he, he knows already who was right and who was wrong. Uh, he tries to find the logic. Uh, he tries to explain um, uh, why it happened. But, uh, as our plan was was um, to look into each and every day of 1917 uh, as uh, those people who lived that time uh, look around. Uh, we decided that we don't need any videos between the reader and the characters. So it looks like it looks like a Facebook. If Facebook existed 100 years ago, uh, it consists only of. Uh, uh, posts of uh, those people who live there. Um, for, for a year, we collected all the all the diaries and letters and um, um, and photos and uh, all the documents and newspapers of of uh, that that period and trans transform them into uh, the format of social network. So for us, social uh, social network is not. Um, it's not um, a tool. Yeah, that that's actually a mechanism to uh, a, a, a general, uh, to tell a story, uh, to learn history. All all um, all those posts are non-fiction. That's exactly what uh, those those people, Nikola Nikolaev or Maxim Gorky or Alexander Kuchpov or Prime Minister Nicholas Golitsyn or Edward um, Zaka, a lot of it. So all all of those characters we've got uh, now we've got more than uh, two thousand characters uh, in Russian version. I cannot say how, 
how many characters in this version, but probably by the end of, of, the, of this year, we're going to, we're going to have 10,000 characters in this version. <coughs> so it, um, it looks like like serial. You every, every single day you can uh, watch and read what uh, those people, mostly celebrities, uh, not only Russian celebrities, but um, all the prominent figures, writers, uh, ballet dancers, uh, artists, journalists, uh, or peasants, or merchants, or just ordinary school children were writing uh, these days exactly 100 years ago. Uh, what they were afraid of, what uh, they were dreaming of. And if we are trying to, um, to feel the atmosphere from from their point of view, we might come to some very expected conclusions. All of them are wrong. They can, they always make wrong predictions. They always make uh, wrong forecasts. They, they are afraid of not that things they should be afraid of. Uh, they have no real plans. Uh, we know, now we know, that the revolution going to happen in, in three weeks at the so-called Arab Revolution. Uh, we are supposed to think that that was a plot against Emperor Nicholas II. Uh, we are supposed to think that that, that was a plot inside his family, so-called um, conspiracy of uh, Grand Dukes. Uh, but we see that, that um, they are talking a lot about uh, the desire to create conspiracy. They, uh, they hate and press Alexandra a lot, and they are dreaming of, um, of revolution, of uh, uh, who they, they are discussing it on a daily basis, but they do nothing. Nothing happened according to the plan. No one planned uh, that what happened. Uh, they, um, they have a lot of conspiracy theories in their minds. That's, uh, that's the second thing that, that resembles a lot um, uh, in today's political situation. Uh, Russia of uh, that time, Russia of 1917, Russian political elite is split into two groups. Uh, one of them suspects uh, one, one of them that is actually uh, Empress Alexandra, her inner circle, uh, and Russian government suspects that uh, some evil forces from Britain, uh, British intelligence service, and British ambassador uh, are conspiring against them and are planning to uh, to overthrow. The emperor, the empress, and the uh, revolution. The second part of Russian political elite, uh, including almost the whole state Duma, uh, almost the, uh, all of the liberal opposition, uh, are absolutely sure that the press is a German spy. <coughs> that, that there is a, uh, and all of her inner circle uh, is infiltrated by German spies. And they want to, uh, to make a peace treaty with Germany and to, to, to end the war. And they think that that's a prison. Uh, now we know that that's, that wasn't true. That there were no conspiracies. Uh, uh, Press Alexander was innocent. She, she was still but innocent. She wasn't a spy. Uh, um, all those uh, grand dukes and members of Russian uh, parliament were not British spies. They, they acted on their own. And all of those suspicions, uh, all those conspiracy theories, they were wrong. People acted uh, because they were, uh, they made a lot of mistakes. And all those mistakes were real reasons for their behavior. Uh, um, you know, that, that project, 
uh, occasionally happens uh, to become probably one of the biggest, um, at least the biggest online uh, projects in Russia to commemorate uh, the events that happened um, 100 years ago. Uh, and more, uh, we were told by uh, when we were preparing this project last year, uh, we we got letters on us from, from different uh, huge institutions like the State Historical Museum or Technical Gallery or um, State Archive. And they asked us uh, for, for some, some cooperation projects and they, they asked us to assist them uh, in preparing um, some exhibitions or some events uh, to commemorate the revolution. Uh, and we, we found out that there is no, uh, there is no official plan. Actually, the government, the Russian state, is not planning any, uh, any debate. It's not planning any, uh, anything, <coughs> anything uh, with a sense to, um, to recollect all those who have stood uh, to start some reflection. So uh, probably our project is the only uh, real uh, attempt uh, to learn that part of history and to discuss it. Uh, I know that uh, that unofficially, st uh, several state-owned channels are now preparing um, several documentaries, and their um, most important idea is that uh, uh, all uh, all the revolution, both revolutions that, that happened in Russia uh, in, in 1917, so called February Revolution and the October Revolution. Uh, were inspired by uh, intelligence from abroad. That February Revolution was was made by uh, by the United Kingdom. The October Revolution was made by by Germany. And the final um, political sense of that revelation uh, is that all the revolutions are uh, something very disgusting. Audience of it of Russian TV channels forget about revolutions. All revolutions are bad because they are uh, for his wise. Um, I think that that, that resembles a lot uh, that stereotypes that existed one hundred years ago. That's very sad years, uh, and um, uh, that's that's actually uh, the same the same approach to uh, to history that uh, I'm afraid this existed in Russia for many years, for many centuries. From the beginning uh, of Russian classical history, from Karamzin, uh, in Russia we had not a history of, of Russian society, we had a history of, of the state, and even more the history of emperors, a history of rulers. We know a lot about our rulers, nothing about our people, uh, and quite little about uh, Russian society. We don't have uh, Martin Luther, we don't have John the Park, we don't have uh, uh, Gutenberg, and um, we don't have uh, activists, we don't have prominent citizens that affected uh, the history of our country. We, we have members. Um, in that sense, I think uh, that our project is, is very important because we are trying to uh, to present uh, history of people. We were trying to show that, that each person, each personality uh, is very important. And uh, each point of view, uh, each fear, each dream, uh, each mistake was very important for what has happened after that. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important to, uh, to remember that that 1917 was not only uh, the terrible, bloody year of Russian history when uh, a lot of 
when Russian fire wasn't destroyed and uh, that was the beginning of the Soviet nightmare. But that was also the, the beginning of the first Russian democratic republic. That was the first, the first modern uh, attempt um, to, make, to make Russia decent, normal, democratic country. Uh, that, that year was a year of experiments. Uh, our project is also an experiment. We're trying to, to create a new genre, a new genre of foreign uh, uh, history. And unfortunately, that experiment, that, that uh, uh, spirit of creativity uh, was not long. Still, uh, it's very important to have this project uh, uh, to show that, that uh, society can affect uh, society matters, and that that's the people who make the history, and the personalities that, that really make the history. Thank you, and I will be happy to go on to questions.
that's okay. That's nice. Do you have any plans to backlog this towards perhaps 19? Do you have any plans to move back in time towards 1914 and perhaps keep going into the Russian Civil War? Because it seems that if you look at the bigger picture, both the First World War and the Revolution of 1917, and then the Russian Civil War, you get a kind of complete, complete picture of this period of transformation in Russian history. Um, like what are your future plans beyond this project? No, that that's that's very very complicated question. Actually, as for now, I I'm telling myself that we first we must make the paper revolution. Only after that, we're going to plan what's going to happen next. Uh, initially, the plan was to start the project on the day uh, of um, 18 of January. 1918. That's the day when the uh, Constitutional Assembly was demanded uh, by Bolsheviks um, when the car was tired. That's why they uh, stopped. And actually, that, that, that was the day of the death of Russian Congress. Uh, no, I don't know. Now uh, I've got a lot of people uh, asking us to, to go on. We I don't, I don't know what we, we already understand that we, that the project do, does not belong to us. It belongs to the characters. They they, they do with us what they want. Uh, uh, probably we we won't be able to resist them. Uh, we, we we don't have money for, for that, but our characters. Carries he does with some budget. Um, but anyway, I think that uh, the mechanism we create is very important. I really feel that uh, that uh, way of transforming, of literal translating, that's not translating, uh, translation. We, we do not change the word. We, we shorten the text, but we do not change that. Uh, but, um, I, I think that uh, transforming uh, books, diaries, newspapers into social network for, format is, is the real way uh, to find the new audience. And I really think that this mechanism is, uh, is the future. It, it can be very successful and um, it's, it's revolution in, in the history. So I, I think that probably we can uh, continue uh, something like that probably for, for another period of time. When, uh, when I'm asked which period of time um, seems really important for, for me next, I always start thinking of something like 1989, 1991. That's also very interesting that could be very different from that moment. We, we, we have very little, uh, let's say, videos from, from 1970. We were surprised uh, to notice that, that no uh, video image of Rasputin is available. It does not exist. We, don't, we, we have several photos of him. We don't have any video. Uh, and if <coughs> we are trying one day to create the uh, social net network of the end of the uh, 20th century. That's going to be absolutely another story and another project, probably much more exciting. Yes, please. Thank you very much for um, the work of the project. One question is the first thing you said in the How did you get this on the right to this conclusion? Did you try to do any interviews or how did you reach this conclusion? Or is it just based on the um, No, first, uh, first, yes. First, I came to that conclusion when, when I was not dealing with the, the archives but uh, with the real people. When I was interviewing people uh, um, while writing a book about Putin and about uh, present uh, Russian political process. And uh, I, I found out that that if, if I'm trying to, to learn the truth about uh, some meeting of free, uh, free men 
that happened 10 years ago. One of them uh, tells me he wasn't in Moscow at that time. The second one uh, tells me that they were four to those three. And the third one tells that um, um, I, I came to the conclusion that, that sometimes people, um, people believe in their um, truly believe in uh, the lie they constructed for themselves. I will tell you the story. That, that's going to be a long answer, but I love that story. It, it did not become uh, the part of my book, but I, I love telling that, that anecdote uh, because I think it reveals um, that it's a, that, that's a good example of my conclusion. Uh, I had an interview with Yuri Lushkov, who used to be mayor of Moscow for many, many years. And, uh, and he was, and I asked him how, how he learned uh, about the resignation of Boris Yeltsin. That happened in um, the 31st of December 1919. And Lushkov um, starts the story for he tells me that, imagine that I'm Lushko. Uh, Yatsun was against uh, Saber, Saber's Cathedral. And me, Lushko, I was trying to rebuild the cathedral. I knew that that's my mission. And the people want me to build the cathedral. That's a sacred place in Moscow, and I did my best to build the cathedral. And Yeltsin was strongly against that. And he, he did his best to stop me from rebuilding the cathedral. He called me to, uh, on the phone and told Guri Mikhailovich, don't be in a hurry. Stop. You don't need to rebuild the cathedral so quickly. And I understood. I, I, don't, I don't remember if, if he said that word, but he meant that, obviously. That he understood that that was Antichrist. That was the reason why he didn't want the cathedral, the legendary cathedral, to be rebuilt in Moscow. So Lushkov tried hard um, to restore it, and Yeltsin did his best to stop him. Finally, Lushkov did that, and that was. 31st of December 1919, uh, 1999, when there was um, the first the first um, liturgy, the first ceremony in, in the new cathedral, not, not official opening, but just the first liturgy uh, in the cathedral, but for uh, Alexei II, Lushkov, some clergy, and Alex, the, the second starts, and the, the phone rings, and Lushkov says yes, and his uh, assistant tells him, Yuri Mikhailovich, Yeltsin has, has just announced that he resigns. <laughs> and Lushkov says, you see, Antichrist could not resist that. <laughs> we finished the cathedral, and he was done. And he was gone because of that. He could not, he could not remain president of Russia because we made the cathedral. And it's impossible not to believe him. He believes that that was true. That's his version. All of us who, who lived that year, uh, 1999, we, we understand what was really happening. Lushkov was planning to, to become president of Russia. Uh, he was really in a hurry to rebuild the cathedral because that was part of his electoral campaign. He wanted to, uh, to, to become president and to boast that with, with, with his uh, um, efficiency, he had the result, he had the cathedral. And Yatsin didn't want Lushkov to become president of um, his successor, that, that was the political meaning of uh, Yeltsin's attempt to stop Lushkov. 
nothing uh, <laughs> related to religion or uh, Christ or Antichrist. That was just political, electoral campaign. Does Lushkov remember that? That he used the Sanders Cathedral as uh, an instrument in his political game? No, he does not remember. If I tell him, he's going to say, no, that was my mission. He does not remember. He truly believes that he, that, that he is saved. Everyone truly believes that, 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 that he, he has always done good things. In other words, really, but in, in, in other example, I had an interview with Mikhail Gorbachev. And I, I asked him if he remembers the day when Nikolai Ceausescu was executed. What did you think that day? I asked. Did you think that you could be the next? And that was the end of the interview. <laughs> we talked for, for an hour, but he was absent. He was, he was shocked. He does not remember himself being a Soviet dictator. He thinks he has always been Havel, Nelson Mandela, he, he thinks he has always been pure Democrat. He, was, he, he thinks that he's a saint. Yeah, that's his way to continue uh, his life. He is not the post Soviet last Soviet dictator. He is the, the first uh, leader of uh, uh, Russian democracy. He forgot. He, he has forgotten the fact that he was Ceausescu's friend, and he could end up as Ceausescu. That's impossible to, for him to remember. Yes, people lie with their memories. They do not remember what. We, what, what has really happened. They changed their memories or their official biographies and they are sincere when they don't remember. Yes, yes. <laughs> I wanted to ask um, how hard it was to get funding for such a project because mm -hmm. I guess it's not easy for a property to be initiated by the state or a non profit project to get budget. So, um, Oh. That was very hard, you were right. But uh, we were very lucky. And we were lucky enough to get all the decent uh, investors that exist in Russia. The first, the first man to support us was Mitro Zemin, who is well known as the best man in Russian philanthropy. Uh, the second man was actually Herman Grant, who happens to be the CEO of Sberman. Uh, um, but he is also, he's got a reputation of liberal uh, and decent personality that who, who cares about Russian history. And he, uh, he considers this project um, as an as educational project. We, we call it edutainment. And uh, so and, um, he, he supported us unexpectedly. And the, the third, um, with, with, not, with not huge budget, unfortunately, with much less when actually than uh, we needed to, to work for, for two years, but still. And uh, the, the third investor we have is Yandex. Uh, that is Russian Google. That is a uh, very important technological part for us and uh, very important. Uh, they, they, all, they, they told us that they've always wanted to have some, some, uh, some project connected with, with content, not only with, with IT, but with uh, meaning. And they thought that at least this idea is, uh, um, is bold enough and, uh, to, for them to start investing in the content. So we, uh, that, that was a very long process. I, uh, I did not expect when, when I was um, quitting uh, Dorsch to become an independent man that, uh, that I'm going to spend the whole year fundraising. Uh, actually, I had to, uh, that was my, my top priority in my first job uh, for, for a year. I was lucky, but. Uh, <coughs> 
unfortunately, uh, we, we, every time we're creating uh, some new bulk projects almost every day. We are always uh, starting some new uh, tests, games, uh, cartoons, uh, and that, that, that makes our project uh, more, more and more expensive. So, so probably we, we, and we we're always fighting for, for some new, new investors to, to support us. Uh, is, it, is it difficult? Yes. Every investor in Russia always asks, uh, is it the little project? Um, is it, um, do you mean that you know, there is something in common? Do you want to compare? No, no, we don't want, the, there are no commentaries from us. Only, only no characters. They do not mention Putin. <laughs> don't be afraid. Nothing about uh, present presidents, nothing about Putin, only Rust Putin. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you didn't say what exactly is the aim of the project or what, what, what you would like to achieve with it. Is it raising awareness in general, this number of fake views on the Russian citizens, or is it becoming part of the curriculum at school? In practical terms, uh, I do not uh, imagine it as a part of the curriculum at schools because. I think it's it's too complicated for for um, for official education, and it does not give uh, a simple answer who is who is good uh, good guy and who is bad guy. So many uh, boys and girls, and all of them are not very good. Uh, I'm always wrong. Uh, I you know I really hope that that this project becomes popular. It's, uh, it's it's March. It's very important for for, for us uh, that that it's um, that young people uh, um, watch uh, watch it as a TV show or um, or scroll it um, like like they do it with the Facebook or or Fantastia. Uh, um, we would like to probably we we don't dream uh, that that they are going to uh, to learn all the history from our website. That's important. Possible. It's have a, a lot of content. But if it's if it's uh, their first meeting with those characters, if they they start feeling that they are ordinary people just like us, they are, they are not. History is not something uh, something that uh, history is not something boring. History is not something uh, from from uh, all the books. History is, is something very very exciting that you got you don't go by a phone. And uh, if you don't uh, you, you don't consider reading messages from your iPhone as reading, you just you, you get something from them. Uh, we. That, that's actually our um, okay. We we like to change the psychology of uh, consumption and information. That that would be good. Yes. First of all, I got a couple of anecdotes which we'll do in the final, which is very imaginative, man. A couple of questions on that. First thing, you just log on to this website and the material is there. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. that's great. Thanks. My other question is, as you worked on this, and we all have internal pictures. Has your picture of it changed? Do you have a different feeling about what happened and why? Have you had a new start? <coughs> mm. You know, yes, um, I, I've always, um, uh, um, I've already said about that, that uh, it's, it's much more, it's much more alive to me now. I, uh, I really feel much more as, as I'm there. I really uh, uh, consider the, those those guys uh, as as I knew them. They uh, it's very interesting to, to feel that they they could not foresee anything. Uh, they they were they were thinking that they are very clever, that they they are making 
very uh, wise plans, that they have very good theories. Uh, they, all of them are absolutely sure they are right, and they are always wrong. Leo is, is famous for, for his lecture in, in uh, February 1917 uh, in Geneva, when he tells his audience that our generation of socialists will not see the Russian Revolution, but probably you, the young people, are going to, uh, to see that that happened. That was like two weeks before the February Revolution. Uh, that that was that that that's probably uh, that's probably a very important uh, conclusion for me. for me, and that reminds me of uh, of my conclusion uh, uh, of those current uh, of those politicians uh, uh, of today's world. Everyone is sure that, that, that he, he is really experienced, he's really clever, he knows what to do. In reality, no plan, no idea, and all the mistakes. Going to elect his first Petra, 
sanctions this summer. It's going to be a huge event, and we are going to, uh, to cover it um, as we do it with the most important uh, events. Like, you know, uh, when, when something really important happens, not, not, not daily routine, we switch uh, into something very different. We, we, we're, we're, we're trying to inform um, as, as if uh, uh, CNN covering American election. We are, during the days of February Revolution, we're going to have uh, online coverage of what is happening uh, minute by minute with live stream, with the map, with, uh, with bits of uh, all the main uh, uh, characters uh, moving around and with, with breaking news of everything important uh, happening at this every moment. And um, so uh, those days of March, uh, February. As we know, February Revolution is 12 to 15 of March. Uh, so it's it's extraordinary event. But we, we have a lot a lot of uh, um, important things like uh, we had we had uh, actually uh, English person did not exist that time, but that was one of the most popular events uh, in Russian version uh, was December, if I'm not mistaken, when Titanic uh, sank, and uh, we had live, live coverage of, uh, of uh, that sh uh, ship uh, sinking in the uh, Mediterranean, and by the Jesuit, uh, the nurse who worked uh, in that ship uh, made that, like, was tweeting every every moment, uh, describing what what's happening on that sinking ship. And that was very dramatic story um, watched by, by a lot a lot of people um, in Russian version. So so uh, I I'm sure that uh, uh, the Congress of Russian George that is going to like the background. It's going to be the event as well. So, so we, we we're trying to, uh, to watch closely all different important uh, scenarios of life. Yes, I have another technical question of how did you get around the two calendars that were in use by the Europeans and by the Russians? So, for, for example, when they are referring to, uh, yes, to the February Revolution, do they still use February in the quotes, even though it refers to March? Uh, we always use uh, new style, so uh, it's so that's why it's uh, um, 12th of March, not 27th of February. Uh, we just we. We erase all the wrong months. We just we don't need them. So, so you have to edit all the rules for that. We are we are we are not changing the wording. We 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 just sh shortening. Them. Yes, we 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 do not. Uh, we, we try not to confuse the reader. Yes. A couple of last questions. Yes. Uh, and uh, we were buying the, the copyrights for, for all the photos yeah, uh, uh, most of uh, uh, all, all the films that were made before um, 1929 uh, are public demand uh, there is an issue with photos and we have to buy them from, from different collections uh, and we do test Uh, so, do you have any concerns that perhaps by uh, ignoring some of the sort of less sexy characters or uh, cutting down some of the longer texts, you are perhaps uh, missing some more detailed but crucial underlying social processes? Which, uh, which yes, very, very yes, th there is a concern. And uh, every day we have huge debates what should we choose. And, Probably we have to make it longer, and or not. But uh, every time we ask ourselves uh, uh, what to choose, uh, do we need to be more uh, 
more academic, or more popular, we I think we need to be to try to be more popular. We we uh, we have uh, every time we we have a quotation, we have a link with a source of information. So if if somebody uh, would like to to elaborate to knowledge please. But um, that that's a, a dilemma, and we. We are sorry, but we have to find the answer, and we have it. Mm. Okay. Um, yes. So you mentioned the project was ableist. I was wondering how it, it's been received by state media. By state media? Yeah. Um, if it's all okay. Don't you know? <laughs> you, you, you are a volunteer for our project. You should work with us. <laughs> I'm not asking if the you know it. Uh, no, there, there is no, not much response from uh, street media in Russia. Uh, oh no, there, there, there is part of the response. I know that that uh, uh, Russia today managed to copycat our, our project and uh, to make <laughs> um, something. Russia 100 years ago in Twitter. Uh, looks. <laughs> but no, normally uh, the project was, um, I haven't heard anything in, in Russian state media. We, we had uh, huge coverage in, in independent media from like Echo of Moscow, um, Afisha, or Moscow Times. Uh, a lot of coverage from international media, from CNN, BBC, Garden, Figaro, Economist. Um, much more attention from from abroad than, than, than from Russian media, but uh, one one more one more exception. Uh, first TV channel of Russian Federation is making a documentary, uh, several documentaries about the anniversary of February Revolution, and they were making kind of the film about our project. They were interviewing me. Uh, they they told me that uh, the film uh, is to be shown on the 15th of 15th of March know what they are going to show. Let's wait. Let's wait and see. Yes, please. Uh, people say that Mark Zuckerberg knows uh, a lot about us and maybe more than we know about ourselves. You, as Mark Zuckerberg of the Russian Revolution, do you have any plans of presenting a bigger picture based on this big data of, of facts that we have? Mm. You know, we we are making something based on that data we collected. We we are uh, we are uh, probably we're going to publish a book with, but it's not it's not going to be bigger. It's going to be shorter than all. The, but yes, we are going to uh, to make uh, uh, for one of the Russian uh, universities uh, uh Probably we're going to make a very complicated project that's that's like a multimedia uh, educational course. But that's sometimes when it's going to be like a game, you will be able to just to, to act, to behave like a citizen of Russian Empire. Then how your life changing uh, uh, during the Russian government and under Bolsheviks. So, so we, we are using our data uh, to, to create some, some additional projects. Actually, we, we're working like not not as a media company that, that creates only this project. We are we like monopolizing uh, 1917. Uh, are doing all kind of things about that period. I'm afraid we are running out of time. So, thank you very much for coming. And now, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I like I, I had. Oh, if you, if you, if you want, just one, yeah, one, one sentence. I had to do that uh, in the beginning, but uh, things, things got. I, I, uh, I realized that I had to do it in the end. I have to to thank the team on the project and to introduce them. So please welcome uh, Serafim Merikano, the editor of uh, English Version of our project.
Malutina is uh, um, the chief archive producer uh, and the, the person who knows all the archives of Moscow. Yeah. Irina Ivanova is our financial director. Natasha Shehan is our cultural editor. Shayan is our executive director and co-founder of the project. Thank you, Karen. You know Seb, he's our volunteer. Thank you, Seb. Nikola <laughs> Astri is our uh, IT guru and the head of our website, our product uh, director. 